So can we move then to Professor Monica uh, Lackenpol? Thank you everybody for inviting me here to share with you why it is so important, which we've just heard, for us to find a way together to end homelessness for children. This week is Inter Infant Mental Health Awareness Week. And so it really brings to the forefront of why we need to be thinking about the future of all our children, but more so children who actually live in a homeless environment, who are living in temporary accommodation, which not only affects, as we've heard, their physical development, but also an emotional development and has an effect on their brain as well. So we've talked about a little bit about the different places that children might live. Some people don't think that children are homeless on the streets, they really just think of adults. But actually we know that when we think of children who are living in temporary accommodation, they can be living in hostels, b and B. some of them are very, very small and rooms very, very tiny. Sofa surfing, where they're going from place to place, so can't actually make anywhere their home. Living within the private sector, um, but also I've seen in my own practice, children who are living in tents, in parks, just so that they have somewhere that's safe to sleep. We've heard a lived experience already, but here's just another one, just to bring your attention to what really is going on. Just read this little bit. It says, it is awful. They are trying to get into here all the time. They keep nicking stuff from us. There are needles all over the place and broken glass. You can smell the drugs in the rooms. At night, you can't sleep. I'm worried they will come and take my children. Can you imagine a child or a young person living in an environment where that stress is always there and their brain is trying to develop and understand what this means and the fear that they are living with. This is just a picture to try and show you a room where three children are living and this is probably larger than some of the rooms where we have a cooker on the right side that puts the children's safety at risk and where particularly in lockdown and COVID the children will have hardly anywhere to move and all the same air that they're breathing in. This image here is really just to strike us with how many children are actually becoming homeless. A child becomes homeless in Britain every eight minutes. And that's equivalent to 183 children per day, which is 2.5 double-decker buses. That's a bit stunning, isn't it? But in addition to that, we know that due to COVID, a number of people have been moved into temporary accommodation due to poverty, due to the risks that they're facing. So this number's probably gone up. And in this picture here, look at the um, purple or blue boxes, really. That's where I really want you to pay attention to. So 50% of people living in temporary accommodation are children. And as I said, people don't actually think that is the case. 73% there's been an increase in children in temporary accommodation in the last 10 years. So the numbers are going up. And what impact does that really have on the children? We've talked about overcrowding, living in one room where you can't actually cook nutritious food. It's impossible to prepare that food. And then your risks to your child's health are from nutrient deficiency or even obesity because you have to use processed foods. It's damp. And when it's damp, you get fungus, you get asthma, you get respiratory problems. When there are bed bugs about, when there are rats about, cockroaches about, Again, we've just heard the impact on the child. You can't put your child on the floor to crawl. You can't let them walk around. They can't develop. And infection risks go up for the child. The noise, if you think of the noise that may, the children may be hearing, not only is that stressful for their brain development, but also it has an impact on their hearing development as well. And as we've talked about, what about the other residents? Are these children safe? Are they safe not only from other people, but from the fear that they're facing when they're hearing verbal abuse or at risk of sexual abuse or physical abuse when they try and move around the accommodation. And these children have no certainty. They don't know when they're going to move. They don't know where they're going to move. Their whole social structure and so social cohesion that makes us individuals safe and our brains to be secure and develop into individuals as adults who are not emotionally at risk, that is really, really affected. But what's even more worrying is that children still die who are in temporary accommodation. And we just had a report recently that showed that 185 cases that we reviewed, some of those were due to overcrowding and unsuitable housing. Actually, 185 were the cases that we found overcrowding and unsuitable housing were the cause of 
probably somebody dying. So it does still cause children to die. Here are some of the other impacts you can have. If you're a parent trying to bring your child up and you're living in temporary accommodation, your emotions, your feelings, your stress have an impact on that child. We know that the risks are higher for premature births and stillbirths. We know that there's lower GP registration. If you're not with a GP, nobody knows where you are. How do you get the services that you need? You're at risk of chronic diseases and you're at risk of emotional and behavioral difficulties as well. And in COVID, we know we're seeing children who are developmentally delayed. Their speech, their school readiness, everything has been impacted. And these are our children for, who are going to be our children for the future. So just to end with, my plea to everybody was, today is about a call for action, us doing something to try and help these children and enable them to grow into healthy adults who are emotionally stable and who can contribute to society. If we invest now, we'll prevent lifelong health issues and destitution, and we will help these children have a better future. Thank you very much for listening.